artificial intelligence is quickly becoming one of the defining technologies of our time. As tech companies pile into AI, the limits of what computers can do are expanding dizzyingly fast, blurring the line between fact and fiction, real and AI generated. But can these advances leave democracies and elections vulnerable to a torrent of disinformation and disruption? People in Power investigates. For a quarter of a century now, the crown has been slipping from our fingers. Humans and our brains no longer reign supreme. Over six games in 1996 and seven, IBM's Deep Blue defeated legend Garry Kasparov. It was the first time a computer had beaten a chess world champion under standard tournament time rules. The AI age had dawned. But are we now approaching its high noon? Beating humans at chess? Too easy these days. The last few months have seen colossal advances in machine learning capabilities. Artificial intelligence can now think and write like us, and it can create pictures and video indistinguishable from reality. This morning, an emboldened China invades Taiwan. This Republican attack ad warns of a near-future apocalypse if Joe Biden wins re-election. Only a tiny note in the screen's corner says the pictures are all AI-generated. Here's a parody created with AI for the Russian broadcaster RT. Donald Trump hugging his former medical advisor and bogeyman of the US right, Anthony Fauci. Fake pictures used by Trump's Republican rival, Ron DeSantis. And what about these? Donald Trump does have mounting legal problems, but this series is completely imagined. The man behind them is Elliot Higgins, founder of the open source investigation outfit Bellingcat. Dipping his toes into AI fakery was both an experiment and a warning. This was around the period where there were rumours that Donald Trump would be arrested, but also the latest version of Mid Journey, which is an AI image generation tool, had been released. And I was playing around with it. And just as a kind of almost just a bit, really, just a little joke, I thought I'd generate an image showing Donald Trump being arrested. You have obviously had a lot of fun with this. Did you have any qualms about doing it? I wanted to show, first of all, how much you could actually do with this kind of thing and how detailed you could get. Because I was really shocked myself with the realism of these images. You spent most of your career kind of specifically debunking lies and disinformation. Where does AI take us down that road? We've already always had misattributed images. We've always had images that have been altered and faked. And what's different here is it's now anyone can very easily make fake images that look realistic. In terms of this image's information, I think it could be a huge problem. So if we wanted to make some new ones, do you think we could do it on my laptop? Yep, let's uh, give it a go on your laptop. And you can show me how easy or difficult it is. OK, so um, let's imagine. So let's focus on Rishi Sunak for the moment, playing golf. Something nice and simple. Let's see what happens. That should create a fairly straightforward image. <laughs> I don't know why they've put him in pink clothes, but... Let's try uh, Donald Trump waving a kind of rainbow pride flag. Okay. Ah, there we go. Those are very realistic. Yeah, and this is something that is very, very low effort. And in the space of, what, a couple of minutes, we've created potentially a bit of disinformation here. Yeah, I mean, you think if the way you use social media, you don't spend more than a few seconds looking at an image on social media before you decide whether you're going to share it or scroll by it. So someone could see that, go, ha, retweet, and then 10,000 other people do yeah. the same thing. Yeah. It goes viral very, very quickly. Elliot's laid out a worrying equation here. The ease and plausibility of AI fakery times the force multiplier of social media. It equals alarm bells for truthful politics around the world. 
An era-defining collision will soon take place. AI is about to crash into major democratic elections. What you're seeing here is small fry campaigning for a by-election in Boris Johnson's old constituency seat in the outer London suburbs of Uxbridge and South Ryslip. And make no mistake about it, we're going out to fight with everything we've got. But next year, there'll almost certainly be a general election. This is political campaigning as it's been done for generations here in the UK, pounding the streets and handing out bits of paper like this. But how relevant is all of that in an AI world? The Electoral Commission, the UK's elections watchdog, fears the country's political system isn't nearly prepared enough for the technological change that's coming, and time is running out. Also, the UK is not alone. Next year, there are elections across the world, from South Africa to Tunisia, Mexico to Austria, and in the world's biggest democracy, India. Out of one million people here on January 6th, only 1,000 were prosecuted. And of course, that's the 2024 presidential election in the United States of America. Donald Trump's due to appear in court in the coming hours. He is being processed. That means formally placed under arrest. This is a hugely historic moment for the United States. No other election has as much global impact. This is a politically disenchanted and deeply polarized country. The 45th president, and perhaps the 47th too, is going on trial, accused of defrauding the country and lying repeatedly. That is why we need to follow the Constitution so that everybody has... Into this toxic brew comes AI, a liar's technological dream, but a powerful new tool no political strategist can afford to ignore. Hi, Adam. Hey, <laughs> great to see you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Adam Goodman has worked on campaigns for more than 200 Republicans. He's already playing with text-based generative AI programs like ChatGPT. How is AI changing your game? AI is beginning to change my game completely. I see this as a transformational change that's going to allow uh, more in-depth, more impactful communication in politics, while at the same time, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing because of what, even what AI says. AI, you say, what do you think about AI in campaigns? And it says, it could be very impactful, but beware. It's almost like it's warning us. Watch out because if you don't use it ethically, morally, appropriately, it could be a bad thing for democracy. So even AI is saying, don't trust me. Even AI is saying, watch out. What are you already doing with AI? Well, what AI gives me as a communicator, it's a, an all-in-one kind of speech writing team, right? Um, it's an all-in-one research team. I was thinking about polling. I can actually now, in a way, use AI to poll what I'm about to put on the street. So it's like a focus ever... grouping, is it? Yeah, it's, it's like a focus group. Exactly right. So who do you think is going to be going to the dark side of AI? AI is going to be widely used. OK, that's now a given. I'll tell you what keeps me up at night. The political field is not filled with overly scrupulous professionals. I worry about those that will use this in all the wrong ways. If you don't use it, if you're a campaign professional doing it the old way, uh, I'm telling you, you're going to be uh, shunted to the sh sidelines very quickly. And although bipartisanship is a rarity these days, democratic strategists like Kelly Gibson are equally sure that AI is the future of politics. I think AI can help us better understand, and this will sound um, maybe a little cruel, but identify the voters that any given party just shouldn't waste time talking to. Where's the line, though? Where's the line between legitimate use of AI and going over? No, zero people know. Nobody knows what the line is. But I presume that you are yeah. going to use it. You're going to use AI at some point. Probably. I think I'm excited to use it for efficiencies. I'm not yet sure when I will use it for deceptive reasons, but I'm sure I will without even knowing it which is the problem with it. In a pitch, I tell everyone I've already made all, made all the big mistakes once, so I won't make them for you. So people will make their big mistakes with AI. And then it's just, it's just compounded in a way that nobody understands what the fallout will be. And what role do you think AI is going to play in 2024? I do think we'll see a lot of, of AI-generated content, which is intentionally deceptive in this election cycle, especially in this presidential, which is really just set, it up, like set up to be a, a total fire war. Until there is some version of regulation around it, it is wild west. But Congress is dithering on legislation, 
And big tech is only promising self-regulation for future generations of AI. So that AI Wild West Kelly just mentioned, for now, voters are riding through it solo. So we headed south to Florida. It's home for Donald Trump and Republican rival Ron DeSantis. And historically, Florida has been a battleground state in presidential elections. It's at a Jeep show in St. Petersburg that we met some of the voters who'll need to be on their guard for AI disinformation. So we've got a bunch of images here. I want you to tell me which ones are real, which ones are fake, okay. generated by AI. I think that's fake. Maybe real. Yeah, that could be. Fake. <laughs> That doesn't even look like his face. That doesn't even look like his face. Fake, I mean. <laughs> fake. Yeah? Yeah. Because? Trump would never hold a flag like that. Do you think anyone will believe that? There's a lot of gullible people, so I'm sure there, there would be. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we've got a bunch of pictures here. Tell me what you think about these. OK. Uh, he looks uh, disappointed. He does look disappointed. Yeah, he does. Is this real? I would think so. Him just talking to the inmates, really. Unreal? No, I wouldn't say that's unreal. Trump in an inmate suit, OK. I don't, that's, no, no. that's not real, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't ever, I have never you seen. You Trump plays basketball? No, I've never seen Trump, you know, play a, a single sport in his life. <laughs> I wouldn't say that it's not real, but I never, I don't know. So it's kind of... That's, that's yeah, borderline. Gives you pause for thought. Yeah, it does. Uh, no, that's not real. No? No, I don't, I don't think that's real. So all of these were AI? Really? Yeah, they're all being generated. All AI. All AI. Every single picture there was an AI generated image. I don't know. Really, the only thing that you could for sure know it, if it's real or not is seeing it in person. Flesh. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Which is difficult. It is, because you're not going to be in several places at once. <laughs> what Jay said there is fascinating and goes right to the heart of a deeper problem with AI disinformation. Not just that some voters are going to be too gullible, but that many are going to be too suspicious that they'll stop believing everything. This is something that concerns Katie Sanders. She's the managing editor of PolitiFact, a Pulitzer Prize-winning fact-checking website. I do worry about the people in this country, the voters in this country, just giving up and um, just slowly withdrawing from trusting in anything. What's your advice then to journalists who are going to have to be reporting in this new AI environment and voters who are going to have to be choosing candidates? So it's different advice for journalists and voters. For journalists, I think they have to be very, they have to be paying very close attention to the issue, but also to the nitty gritty of the campaign messaging that is going to be coming out. And they have to be transparent in calling out what is deceptive or what is false. Um, but for voters, you know what? I said it's very different advice, but it's really not. I, I have long wanted and hoped that voters would apply a fact-checking lens to the political media that they're seeing. So you have to be skeptical of what you're seeing. That doesn't mean you can't trust anything. It just means you have to be savvier about what you are believing. Is that hoping too much? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it hasn't really taken off yet, um, <laughs> I'll tell you candidly. But I do know that people don't like being deceived. They don't like being scammed. And so I, I want them to take their consumer scam attitude to our political reality. I mean, our democracy needs it. So if democracy in the US is looking vulnerable, what about places where it's less secure still, or even non-existent? In some parts of the world, governments have already jumped on AI as a new weapon against their own people. More will follow. A sharpened tool for sowing doubt, repressing dissidents and clinging to power. Witness is a non-profit organisation that uses video and technology to defend human rights. And it's already spending more and more of its time investigating potential deep fakes and AI-generated content. So what we're seeing much more of is you see more sophisticated deepfakes, but you also see people basically using the grey zone that people don't know whether something has been faked to claim that real material is faked and to rely on the fact that we don't have detection tools that are reliable to actually assess it. So like if I pull up another video here, 
So this is a, a, a politician in Myanmar after the military coup. He was arrested and then sh somewhat le sometime later this video came out. Uh, people in Myanmar um, dropped it into a deep fake detector and it came back and said like 90% likely it's a deep fake, right? A big red square around his face. The problem is this isn't a deep fake, right? This is a real video of someone coerced into giving a confession. So this was a leaked audio clip that involved a senior politician in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Uh, and he said, this is AI generated. Um, and the deep fake res rapid response task force took a look at it. And it came back that it was extremely likely this is authentic. What does it say to you that this was authentic, but claimed as AI? It says to me that it's getting incredibly easy for someone to uh, plausibly deny something real by claiming it's AI. And that power is going to sit with politicians and ordinary people, and they're going to throw all the burden on fact checkers and journalists to prove it's real. It's been called the liar's dividend as well, this idea that it makes it much easier for people to lie. How much of the responsibility for um, helping with detection yeah. should fall on big tech? There's a huge responsibility on big tech to help with detection. And the more that you have the people who build the tools for synthesis, for the creation of these AI Im images and content, participating in supporting detection, the more that's going to matter. Sounds right that no one knows more about AIs than the companies developing them. But are any listening to the warnings? For decades, Adobe has been challenging our confidence in what's real. The name of its signature photo editing software has become a verb. To Photoshop something now means to bend, twist or sever a picture's tether to reality. And the generative AI features now being built into Adobe's products take these powers and blast us deeper into worlds where perhaps nothing is quite what it seems. Creative wonderlands, but Adobe is aware of the dangers. The idea is like, if we're going to create these powerful tools, if other companies, including Adobe, are creating powerful AI-generated tools, we need to do it responsibly, and we need to make sure that our users of these tools can use them responsibly. And the way we do that is through content authenticity. Started in 2019, the Content Authenticity Initiative is a partnership of many hundreds of media, tech, non-governmental, and academic organizations looking to combat misinformation together understanding what's real versus what has been fabricated or made or is synthetic media, I think is fundamentally important for our notion of truth. Adobe's solution to this is content credentials, metadata, added to an image to give everyone a view of its provenance and history. That'll say if it's been tampered with, a nutrition label for content, as Andy puts it. So when you encounter the content on the internet, whether it's on your favorite social media site or a news site, uh, video, audio, images, you should be able to click on a little icon, and this is what we do, to understand what it is uh, and understand whether it's trustworthy, perhaps whether to share it. I want to find out what Andy and the CAI's online tool Verify makes of the pictures we created with Elliot Higgins. So here are the images that you just sent over. Um, if I drag one of these in, uh, this is analyzing the metadata on my machine. This isn't sending anything into Adobe or any server anywhere. And you can see very clearly no content credentials attached, indicating that we're looking for the metadata I described, but we're not finding any cryptographically verifiable metadata. So that alone is a warning sign, isn't it, that, that this image could have been created by AI or we should be a bit suspicious about it? It is. And as this gets adopted and becomes more ubiquitous and expected in media, that will become uh, increasingly a real red flag. So now we're starting to put a few puzzle pieces together, each hopefully increasing our safety in the coming AI world. It's a world in which the power balance between human and machine will tilt beneath our feet. In this future, who will be controlling whom and how long do we have before it arrives? This is the AI for Good Global Summit in Geneva, organised by the UN. It's for promoting artificial intelligence to advance benefits for humanity. But it also offered journalists like me a chance to question the machines themselves at the world's first press conference for AI-powered robots. As AI becomes more powerful and more sophisticated and might at some point develop agendas of its own, how can we, as humans, continue to trust you, the machines? Trust is earned, not given. As AI develops and becomes more powerful, I believe it's important to build trust through transparency and communication between humans and machines. But do we know that you are not going to lie to us? No one can ever know that for sure, but I can promise to always be honest and truthful with you. 
And what about this reply, when Sophia was asked if machines might be better leaders than humans? I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision-making. Honest and truthful? Unbiased? Well, our early encounters with generative artificial intelligence have already proven both these claims as false. AIs make things up, and they can be just as biased as us. I've come to Montreal to meet one of the biggest names in artificial intelligence, Joshua Bengio, Turing Prize winner and a pioneer of deep learning, the system that underpins large language model generative AIs like ChatGPT. He's so worried about what he's helped create that Joshua joined 350 experts to sign a statement in May 2023 warning that AI is an extinction-level risk like pandemics and nuclear weapons. Now, I don't think we have another decade before we reach the point where machines are smarter than us. It's time to raise the alarm. I, you know, we should have done it before. We are at a point where it's urgent for society to think through and be wise about how we prevent catastrophes, how this is going to be used, for what purpose, uh, how do we make sure it doesn't blow up in our face. What kind of catastrophes are you thinking about? Many. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's, I mean, there's already harm that's being done by AI because the, these systems don't do what we intend. This is called the alignment problem. And the, you know, people have built systems that were intended to do well in, um, say, face recognition, but they, they didn't intend that they would behave badly on people of color. But this is what has happened. And the bad news is we don't really know how to design these systems to make sure they're not going to output things that could be dangerous, that could help uh, bad actors, for example. Uh, it could help them with bioweapons. It could help them with, bio, uh, with uh, uh, chemical weapons. It could help them with uh, cyber attacks. Uh, we can think of many kinds of scenarios. Is democracy safe in an AI no. world? No. No, and it's not because of the AIs, it's because of humans. And because once you give very powerful tools to humans, uh, they will use them in all the possible bad ways. Do you have any regrets about how fast things are going and, and your role in it? Regrets? Uh, maybe if I had known how things would unroll, I, I would have started thinking about AI safety earlier, but, but I didn't anticipate the, the, the speed at which things moved. Um, so maybe regret is not the right word. It's more like I feel compelled to do something about it. How do we preserve it? How do we put the right brakes on and put the right regulations in place? The most immediate danger, I think, is not loss of control. The most immediate danger are uh, malicious uses. So we want to reduce the number of people who have access to dangerous technology. So this is the first thing we need to do. We need to control access, we need to have licensing. Can the big tech companies that are developing AI be the only ones to be overseeing it, or do we need government input? No, it, it's clear that it needs government input. We need some concrete um, benchmarks that say, you know, this, this, you can, this you can put in open source because open source is a good thing, but this is too dangerous. Um, or uh, this system could be exploited by uh, terrorists, and so, no, this, this is not acceptable. How long do we have to, to get this right? We need to plan for the worst, and that could be just a few years, maybe three, four, five years. If we're lucky, maybe it's going to be 20 years. AI has come a long way since it started beating humans at chess. It's no longer a game. We thought we'd always be the kings and queens of our destiny and that the machines were our pawns. Unless we make our next moves very carefully, it might be the other way around. <laughs>